Hi guys, we are discussing tumor lysis syndrome, which is very important for any of the exams like USMLE or EDIAC. As introduction part, I can say that tumor lysis syndrome is a clinical condition that uh, can occur spontaneously or after the initiation of chemotherapy and is associated with uh, many metabolic disorders like hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia, hypocalcemia, hyperuricemia, we will discuss all of them later. And it is a uh, metabolic and oncology, uh, oncologic uh, emergency that frequently encountered in clinical practice. Uh, by the way, uh, cancer is the leading cause of morbidity and mortality in the United, United States and is the uh, second leading cause of this. So tumor lysis syndrome usually develops after the initiation of chemotherapy treatment. However, it can occur spontaneously in a high-grade hematology oncology malignancies. Because this uh, condition is very less subtle, it is imperative to identify patients at high risk for developing uh, TLS or tumor lysis syndrome and starts early preventive therapy. Uh, in other, another way, a definition of uh, TLC or tumor lysis syndrome is a group of electrolyte and metabolic disturbances that follow chemotherapy in cancer patients, of course. And typically um, with lymphoproliferative malignancies like non-Hodgkin lymphoma, leukemias, or any uh, blood type of cancer that or fats growing solid tumors. It usually presents within uh, 12 to 72 hours after chemo initiation of chemotherapy, of chemotherapy, but can occur spo spontaneously. Uh, the cancer cells lies and release their content into the blood and this one is important that all the content coming into the blood into the into the blood vessel and after it circulate to all the body and affect um, most vulnerable organs or system of organs metabolic changes you have to memorize uh, this uh, changes as they are very important especially for exams like hyperkalemia hyperphosphatemia uh, these two components are released from the cell as you know uh, from a statistic for example uh, potassium is mostly inside the cell like 95% 95% and only 5% are into the blood and when we are taking the blood sample and see the uh, 3.5 to 5.5 it is inside the vessel and other is in, in the cells so uh, the tumor lysis the lysis of tumor leads to a massive release of intracellular potassium and phosphor as you know, phosphor or phosphate uh, ligate or binding to the calcium and precipitate it in div uh, d diverse uh, tissues and of course produce a hypocalcemia into the blood, hyperuricemia from destruction of the cells and a pathway that lead to uric acid creation, high creatinine and urea consistent with renal impairment as uh, far as going uh, impairment of the kidney and inability to excrete all the metabolites, it's a creatinine and urea increases. Low HCO3 consistent with metabolic acidosis that trying to compensate with possible hyperlactinemia and high lactate dehydrogenase. If we are going to the next section that is called pathophysiology, Tumor lysis syndrome is caused by the massive release of intracellular ions as we uh, talked previously like potassium, phosphorus and nucleic acid uh, that have been metabolized to uric acid. The main organ responsible for the excretion of these substances is the kidney. For this reason, kidneys suffer and uh, become 
uh, uh, unable to to produce uh, their work. When the compensatory response of the kidney is exhausted uh, from the mass release of intercellular ions, uric acid pr produces uh, obstructive uropathy, which can then progress to acute kidney uh, injury. So let's start with the uh, molecules called nucleotides uh, that comprise DNA. Uh, these nucleotides are units made of phosphate groups, sh sugar, nitrogen, and uh, the nitrogen base is uh, adenine, timine, guanine, and cytosine. So uh, they are purines and pyrimidines like adenine and guanine are purines or pure as gold, mnemonic from USMLE, and uh, timine and cytosine pyrimidines. So the metabolism of the purines and uh, pyrimidines uh, leads to a production of xanthine. So nucleic acids metabolizes into the xanthine. So xanthine is a or xanthine is then uh, further metabolized into the uric acid, as you see as a step uh, ahead, in a reaction that is catalyzed by the xanthine oxidase. Due to the rapid turnover of uh, tumor cells, uh, there is an overwhelming production of uric acid, which then crystallizes in the renal tubules, causing obstructive uropathy from uh, from and uh, decreased uh, glomerular filtration rate. And of course, uh, uric acid is uh, also a potential pro-inflammatory agent and can cause the release of uh, cytokines uh, that uh, produce uh, or attract white blood cells to the kidney and facilitate further injury. It's a friend with tumor like uh, tumor necrosis factor one or and other proteins. Here we have hypocalcemia and uremia for hyperuricemia. Of course, we see the symptomal uh, appearance like spasm from low calcium tetani, hostic sign, trousseau, uh, bronchospasm, and even seizures. From uremia, uh, we have weakness, lethargy, nausea, vomiting, irritability, pruritus, pericarditis. As you know, uremia passing do not have limit and it passes easily as well as water in a similar way. Passes any of the tissue and deposit. And like here we have a ratio of two, the same will come to the next side to equilibrate. Joint pain as deposition, renal colic eye pain, uh, deposition in the skin, like gutta and pruritus and gangrene. Okay, we have uh, electrolyte imbalances, and as we talked previously, hyperkalemia is associated uh, also with many other uh, symptoms or diseases when, when we have to uh, differentiate it to not, to not confuse of course if patient have a tumor and even follow uh, a chemotherapy or radiation therapy the probability of uh, producing tumor like syndrome is increased by other way you have to differentiate with hypoglycemia especially hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis with increased uh, potassium inside um, outside the cell as a buffer system, congenital general hyperpla hyperplasia, uh, toxicity from digitalis like digoxin, acute tubular necrosis with inability to excrete, uh, bar as well destruction of the cells, head trauma, rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis is a destruction of the muscle cells and of course uh, release of all the components into the blood and going through the body and barns. Barns, lysis, trauma, all of them are from uh, T 
tissue destruction, any type of tissue. Hyperphosphatemia can also be associated with uh, gammopathy, Walderstrom, uh, microglobulinemia, myeloma, para, uh, pseudo hypo parathyroidism, rhabdomyolysis, vitamin D intoxication, and vitamin D intoxication because of increased absorption of calcium and phosphate as well. Uh, Phosphosoda abuse and pseudo hyperphosphatemia. Uh, as well, hyperuricemia, as it is present, you should uh, differentiate with other diagnoses like hyperparathyroidism, hypothyroidism, and nephrolysiasis, as uh, it is uh, formation of of the stones at the kidney, alcoholic uh, ketoacidosis, goat, pseudo goat, uh, glycogen storage disease type 1a, hemolytic anemia as well destruction uh, destruction of the erythrocytes and increasing the part of uric acid uh, Hodgkin lymphoma and uric acid nephropathy uh, you have to diagnose this and you have many criteria like laboratory diagnosis and it requires two or more of the following criteria in the same uh, 24 hours period from third to seven days after initiation of chemotherapy because uh, right after the initiation of chemotherapy it is not so pronounced so in 20 percent 25 percent cases uric acid potassium phosphorus will uh, increase will increase and it uh, may be greater than this uh, baselines calcium by other way will decrease and will become less than 7 mg per deciliter. How you can diagnose uh, by X-ray or CT scan, it evaluates a medicinal mass or presence of the pleural effusion or even uh, a pericardial effusion that is called pericarditis. CT scan and uh, ultrasonography of the abdomen and retro retroperitoneal structure if mass lesion is located in the abdomen or retroperitoneal is the detection of the mass arrhythmias from the increased potassium for example or uric acid uric acid sorry for writing so uric acid a uh, complete blood count uh, hallmark of uh, most malignancies is leukocytosis with anemia and thrombocytopenia. Uh, comprehensive metabolic panel as you detecting blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine, lactate, dehydrogenase, urine analysis with precipitation of uric acid uh, cells that can obstruct um, the urinary urinary pathway. Alkalinization of urine with sodium bicarbonate is a standard of treatment. So let's talk about treatment of uh, of tumor lysis syndrome. Of course you have to um, make expansion, rapid expansion of the intravascular volume and you are doing this with uh, intravenous solutions like crystalloids and not uh, colloids, only crystalloids and initiated uh, 48 hours before uh, starting chemotherapy and you can give uh, if to uh, look at these uh, numbers like 4 to 5 liters per day or 3 to 3.5 liters per meter, uh, meter uh, square. Allopurinol is another uh, way of treating patient. It is a uh, structural isomer of hypoxanthine and hypoxanthine oxide days convert uh, allopurinol to oxypurinol and uh, in this way allopurinol will uh, make busy of these oxide days so this is an uh, the active metabolite and it is ex excreted primarily in the kidney the level of xanthine after allopurinol could be increased because of the inhib inhibition of the conversion of xanthine to uric acid so the problem of more acute uh, follow-up
up is uric acid so allopurinol prevent uh, pre prevent the conversion of xanthine into uric acid another treatment could be recombinant urate oxidase how about sodium bicarbonate for urine alkalinization the normal urine uh, is acidic so have a pH of 5 and the solubility of uric acid in urine is increased about tenfold with the alkalinization of urine and uh, it will uh, promote excretion. The ref risk of alkalinization of the urine is a decrease uh, in the level of ionized calcium so as uh, there is less bonding of calcium to albumin as albumin is a uh, a standard and universal transporter for many of the components in um, the body and of course calcium it is dependent on the acidic or alkaline uh, ambience this uh, can worsen the hypocalcemia associated with TLC and lead to arrhythmia or tetanine Alkalinization of urine can favor the precipitation of calcium and phosphate cells in the kidney uh, tubules and making uh, acute kidney injury worse in this situation. Uh, calcium chloride or gluconate or calcium gluconate uh, can be administered parenterally to treat hypocalcemia as a symptom. Uh, hemodialysis. Hemodialysis uh, can save the situation if the level of potassium and phosphorus is too high uh, and in and there is association of acute kidney disease or injury so fibuxostate is a uh, is the last call and it is the xanthin oxidase inhibitor that is relatively new to the market and does not cause hypersensitivity reaction I in comparison of course was uh, was um, allopurinol and it have a better control of hyperuricemia good and safety profile and preservation of renal function so guys once again you have to memorize uh, two slides it is this one and the second with uh, metabolic components that it starts 12 to 72 hours after the initiation of chemo chemotherapy it mostly occur in a patient of uh, after chemotherapy in the lymphoproliferative uh, malignancies mostly like um, I mean like uh, uh, sorry like uh, blood le leukemias or or blood cancer and you see uh, once again this uh, manifestations like increased level of potassium phosphor uric acid creatinine from renal impairment lactate dehydrogenase and very important to know that low is calcium and bicarbonate thank you very much and have a great time guys